This episode of Marijuana Today Daily is brought to you by our friends over at Cureleaf, one of the nation's top multi-state cannabis operators with 49 local dispensaries, 14 cultivation sites, and 13 processing facilities, serving up more than 165,000 registered medical marijuana patients. Check them out over at cureleaf.com, spelled C-U-R-A-L-E-A-F. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Friday, October 25th, 2019, and you're tuned in to episode 826 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. Democratic presidential candidate Senator Bernie Sanders sits atop our headlines today as yesterday at 4.20 p.m., he released a plan outlining how he would deschedule marijuana within the first 100 days of taking office, should he be elected, while also pledging that he'd push for new legislation making marijuana completely legal. Senator Sanders' plan also calls for limiting the size of cannabis companies so as to prevent the formation of overly powerful large companies while also blocking out big tobacco from the industry entirely. And as you might expect from a plan from Senator Sanders, he would also push for social equity provisions like community reinvestment funds, automatic expungement of marijuana crimes, and the elimination of drug testing for people applying for public benefits. All in all, it's a super solid plan. Click over to Kyle Yeager's piece on Marijuana Moment for more here. Canadian licensed marijuana producer Hexo Corp, who I just reported on yesterday for a newly announced large round of fundraising, is following up that headline with news of a 200 person layoff, representing around 20 percent of its overall workforce. The company delayed releasing financial results earlier this week and said that the job cuts will better position it to survive Canada's ever changing cannabis marketplace. Included in the cuts were a number of executive positions, including Hexo's chief marketing officer and its chief manufacturing officer. Hexo's stock was down on the news, coming in around $2.40 a share, off from an April peak of more than $8 a share. This week's final top story is news that Ohio-based marijuana company Green Growth Brands is reporting that it lost more than $64 million for the fiscal year, with just $15.7 million in revenue coming in, leaving it with just under $90 million in debt. Green Growth Brands has made headlines over the last year or so with an expansion of its CBD shops into more than 100 malls located across the country. One interesting note on this is the comment made by independent auditors in a recent filing by Green Growth Brands that said it did not, quote, currently have sufficient working capital and available liquidity to meet its commitments and fully execute its business plan over the next 12 months and is dependent on the company's ability to raise additional finances to fund its operations. Unquote. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz it in headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, Cureleaf, one of the nation's top multi state cannabis operators with 49 local dispensaries, 14 cultivation sites, and 13 processing facilities serving more than 165,000 registered medical marijuana patients. No matter where your legal marijuana needs lie on the cannabis spectrum, Cureleaf is there for you with their Cureleaf Medical Marijuana, Cureleaf Hemp, and Yuku Craft Cannabis. Cureleaf wants you to live life well, which is why everyone over there puts as much time and energy as they do into their research and development projects. You can zip over to Cureleaf.com today and check out the closest Cureleaf shop to you because there's no better way to experience the Cureleaf difference than by making a visit yourself. Big, big thanks to everyone over at Cureleaf for the support that makes today's news possible. All right, time for the Blitz. We have some good numbers out of Germany as to what are that country's most commonly claimed medical marijuana qualifying conditions. Just like we see in the U.S., the overwhelming leader when it comes to qualifying conditions in Germany for medical marijuana is pain, ticking in at a solid 71% of all patients. Germany has just 6,538 registered patients, so we're dealing with a relatively small pool here, but it's still nonetheless interesting to note. Spasticity comes in at a distant second place with just under 11% of patients, followed by anorexia, epilepsy, ADHD, Tourette's, and a catch-all category of other. Leafly has a really good story up that's worthy of a full dive in, looking at how illicit marijuana dispensaries in the city of Los Angeles are being targeted by criminals who know that illegal shops are less likely to call the police in the event of a robbery. 
According to Leafly's story, there have been 23 dispensary robberies in Los Angeles this year, with all but three of them happening at unlicensed shops. L.A. has struggled over the last few years to convert its largely unlicensed population of dispensaries over to legal stores, with city officials saying they've been able to reduce the count of illicit shops over the last 18 months from 400 to just 140, which compares to L.A.'s 187 legal dispensaries. Penelope Overton at Maine's Portland Press Herald covers a law set to take effect in the state in December that will allow out-of-state hemp farmers to sell their crop to Maine edibles manufacturers for use in creating CBD products, just as long as the out-of-state hemp comes from somewhere with a licensed hemp program. A different law went into effect in August that required that any CBD product made in Maine be made with Maine-grown hemp, which caused some worries in the industry over fears of raw material shortages moving lawmakers to legislate around it with this new law opening up the industry to non-Mainers, though the requirement that CBD products be manufactured in the state remains. We have an update to an old storyline involving the multi-state cannabis operator Vireo Health, which was caught up in a bit of potential criminal trouble four years ago after some of its employees were accused of illegally transporting cannabis oil from one of their facilities in Minnesota to one in New York State which we should all know now is pretty illegal, both from a state and federal point of view. Prosecutor Assistant County Attorney Shane Simmons announced that charges would be dropped against Verio's former Chief Medical Officer Laura Boltman and its former Chief Security Officer Ronald Owens, noting their clean criminal records as the main reason. Vireo was never charged or fined, though Minnesota lawmakers did later pass a new law slapping fines of up to $250,000 on any cannabis company found moving product out of the state. We return to the city of Los Angeles for this one, where yesterday the Cannabis Regulation Commission held a meeting at which a lot of people involved in the L.A. Social Equity Program showed up to complain about how the city was handing out legal marijuana business licenses, with the main thrust of the crowd's argument being that the process was unfair. It sounds like there's also a lot of frustration over the low number of social equity licenses to be given out at just 200. There's a lot of lessons to be learned here in L.A.'s messy rollout. Give this one a read. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer of New York said during a press call on Wednesday that he wants to see the U.S. Food and Drug Administration release guidelines for producing hemp-derived CBD goods. Senator Schumer noted the potential economic benefit of hemp for both the country and his state and said, quote, That's why I'm calling on the FDA to do its job in a timely manner and issue guidance related to CBD classification, labeling, quality, marketing, and sales. And once the feds spell out these ABCs of CBD, the industry will seed and grow from one corner of the state to the other. Many jobs will be created in the industrial hemp space, and farmers will be able to safely cash in on this cash crop, unquote. And finally for today, the Associated Press picked up on the growing conflict between cannabis and higher education, with an increasing number of schools booting out students for using marijuana, even the medicinal type. This is another part of our society that's been affected by the disparity between state and federal cannabis laws, as colleges and universities cite federal restrictions for why they have to crack down on any kind of sanctioned marijuana use. One particular vertical of higher education at risk of being sanctioned for marijuana use is within medical and nursing schools, where students have mandatory drug tests related to their work in the medical field. That is catching students like Sheeta Asar, who was studying diagnostic medical sonography at a community college in Arizona and was actually taken out of class because she failed a drug test tied to her medical use of cannabis. There are a lot of things that are wrong with the federal illegality of cannabis. This is certainly one of the more frustrating. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again Monday morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. Thanks to our sponsor, Cure Leaf, and to our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the illustrious ranks of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says become a patron. I'm your host, Jay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in and starting your day with marijuana today. Today.
One take, Shay. One take.